Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. Got a comment? Email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net. And feel free to give us a call, 208-991-4783. Before we do get started, I do want to remind you about the special offer we have for our listeners through Audible. Uh, With Audible, you can try it out for a two-week risk-free trial, get a free audio book or old-time radio compilation. And they have several available, including The Shadow Night of Darkness. Uh, But you can read a wide variety of both new and classic books. Try out Audible, audiblepodcast.com slash oldtimeradio. That's audiblepodcast.com slash oldtimeradio. Well, let's go ahead. We're going to get into today's episode of Jeff Regan, The Man with the Key. My name's Jeff Regan. I get ten a day in expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. With Jack Webb as Jeff Regan investigator, stand by for hard boiled action and mystery and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of The Man with the Key. A block above Wilton on Hollywood Boulevard, there's a street they call Taft. It isn't very long. About 48 palm trees and a couple of bad sewers. It figures that the guy who laid it was nearsighted. He didn't see the hills three blocks away. Got kind of a tired look, like an old lady who's been moving furniture. There's a dirty gray apartment house on the right-hand side of the street. That's my place. 308. A low ceiling and a leaky faucet, a telephone that rings at the wrong time. It was last Monday night, about 11 o'clock. I was in bed listening to the party next door when it rang. It was the lion. Regan, get your clothes on. That the way you sleep? You're going to be busy. we got a new client. Now, tell me all about it in the morning. Special messenger came to my place 15 minutes ago with a C note. Any good? It was from somebody named Dora King. Who's that? That's what you're going to find out. I can see better in the daytime. She's waiting for you right now. Oh, yeah. At a place on La Brea called the Southerner. Should I take my banjo? Don't be funny. She wants to talk to you, so get over there. What does she want to talk about? How would I know? Well, don't you ever check into things? That's what I pay you for. All right, where's last week's salary? You'll get it. When? As soon as I find out if your expenses were legit. Now get busy. That all? No, call me right after you've seen her. Why? I want to know what's what. You mean you want to know if she can afford more than a C-note? You're getting out of line. That's what they told Gypsy Rose Lee. Well, I got over there about 11.30. Turned out to be a small place. Long on the shadows and short on the whiskey. There was a bald-headed guy playing a piano in one corner. I guess he'd been inside for a long time, because... He'd never been out for a music lesson. The bartender was the only other guy in the joint. His name couldn't have been Dora King. So I went to work on a straight shot and waited. Two drinks later, a girl in a black dress walked in. She took in the piano player and the bartender and me. I won. She started toward me with a slow, easy kind of a walk like a panther looking for breakfast. When she oozed onto the stool beside me, the bartender got damp all over the air conditioning wasn't doing him any good. What'll it be, miss? Make it the same as his. Okay, put it in water. Got a match? Yeah. Got a cigarette? Mm-hmm. Got a name? Maybe. I'll bet it's Regan. All right, you got that much. My name's Dora King. I'm sorry I'm late. You ever on time when you meet a guy? No. Your money, you can spend it any way you want. You always this nice to customers. I don't get paid to be nice. What do you get paid for? Have you got a story? Mm, I haven't had my drink yet. Hey, you! Coming up, coming up. I'm jet propelled. Here you are, miss. Hey, hot night, ain't it? You waiting for the weather to change? 
That ain't gonna change in here, brother. What's your first name? Jeff. Hmm. I don't like it. Neither do I. I'm gonna call you Regan. All right, let's start calling. Have you got a license? Covers up a hole in my wall. Mm -hmm. Have you got something that says you're what you say you are? All right. Here. Hmm. The lion's eye. Six feet, 170. Brown eyes. Hmm. You fit? Yeah, I got a mole on my left shoulder. <laughs> Let me see. You pass. Okay, you won the toss. Let's kick off. Well, this isn't where we play. We'll go in my car. Where? You'll find out when you get there. Maybe I won't like the field. You trust me, don't you? No. Good. Uh, fill her up again. We're just leaving. Floor show starts in a couple of minutes. That uh, piano player going to be in it? Yeah, he's my brother. He's going to play something he wrote himself. Any good? Stinks. Maybe you better go. <laughs> The bartender was pouring himself four fingers of rye and about a fingernail of water when we walked out of there. We climbed into a big Nash convertible, parked in front of the place, and headed for Santa Monica Boulevard. Then we turned east, past Western, down to Vermont, and south to Marathon. All at once, we were climbing a hill on a dark street. That gave us a view of the city. Twenty years ago, a real estate broker might have had something, but now it was just an old neighborhood with a sad look like a toe dancer with a short leg. Nobody said anything. And I was beginning to have a feeling that maybe she'd forgot her compass when she slowed the car down. She pointed to a two-story house in the middle of the block, and I nodded. Then she shoved the car in second, and spun around the corner and came to a stop. I got out and walked around to let her out. She didn't move. End of the line. Short fare. In time for you to go to work. What kind of work? The white place back there. 3936. You saw it? It came through. It's a boarding house. I already got a room. On the second floor, number 10. Knock twice. Prohibition's dead, lady. There's a man there. His name's Bender. Ben Bender. That'll wake him up. He's expecting you. You're quitting? My job's finished. You're the new help. Well, what do I do? He'll tell you. That all? Mm, one thing more. Come here. Yeah. Mm. Part of my fee? That's extra. I don't generally get tipped. Just for luck. You act like I'm going to need lots of it. You are. When do I see you again? You don't. Goodbye, gorgeous. I stood there and watched her drive away. And then I noticed it. Somebody in a black coupe coasted around the corner, kicked into high gear at the bottom of the hill... I kept watching, but whoever it was hadn't read the traffic laws lately. He didn't use his lights for two blocks. Oh, it registered. He was on a tail job. And Dora was nice to tail. Thirty-nine, thirty-six marathon. Inside, it smelled like stale beer and rotting wood. Room number ten was at the top of the stairs. The door was already open. A thin guy with a hungry look was sitting on the edge of the bed. He was all bones. He didn't get up when I came in. He just kind of looked at me, and his eyes were full of water. All of a sudden, he pulled a bandana out of his pocket and began coughing. <coughs> You're sitting in a draft. All my life. <coughs> you, Regan? A girl with warm lips said I'd find you here. Thanks for coming. Sit down. <coughs> Hey, you just got back from a trip. Up north? Yeah. Sanitarium? States said I needed a cure. Did it take? What do you think? They're still coughing. The doctor said I could go. You can give me a going away present. Ten bucks and a suit of clothes. <laughs> it was a bum rap. That's what they all say. Who I am? Ben Bender. Big Ben Bender. Does that mean anything to you, Pilgrim? Must have been before my time. Yeah? How old do you think I am? I'm out of practice. I look 60. And I'm 45. That's what seven years in a sanitarium will do. <laughs> you ought to get a specialist. Already got one. What's his name? 
You. No, I'm only an intern. You'll do. All right, what do you want? When the guy goes up there, he makes a lot of friends. And a lot of enemies. Sometimes you can't tell one from the other. Does it make any difference? Big Ben don't trust nobody. No? What about that girl? Dora? Forget her. Her job's done. That's what she said. See this key? Yeah. I wear it around my neck. I wore it for seven years. You'll wear it for the next seven hours. Why? Them friends and enemies I was telling you about. What does the key fit? My safety deposit box at the American Security Bank. You meet me there. Tomorrow, the 10th. What if I oversleep? Stay up all night. I'll pay for the no dose. Just be there. After that? And your job's finished. <laughs> it's off the it's off this door you ever made. Look, now you kept this key seven years. Why can't you keep it for seven more hours? My business. What's in the box? My business. Okay. Any of those friends or enemies drive a black coupe, white sidewalls? I don't know. Why? My business. I left him sitting there. He looked as happy as a sword swallower with the hiccups. Well, I put the key in my coat pocket, but it felt hot, like a dynamite stick with a short fuse. If Big Ben had been holding it for so long, somebody else might want it. Maybe somebody who drove that black coupe. Well, I went out the back entrance, walked down an alley, and doubled over five blocks to Vermont. I stopped a cab, and I had him take me over to the lion's place. It was 2.30 in the morning when he opened the front door. He was wrapped in a bathrobe big enough to keep all the silkworms working overtime. What do you want, Regan? Information. You have been drinking? I've been working. What kind of work? Well, I got a key. That all? That's what they say. Who's they? A con named Bender. Ben? Bender? That's right. I thought he was doing a long run up in Quentin. Well, he's out now. Where does Dora King fit? Taxi service. She took me to Bender. He gave me the key. Let me see it. All right, here. Safety deposit box. That's right. Nurse made to a hunk of metal until tomorrow at 10. What then? Well, I meet him at the American Security Bank and turn it over to him. Well, do it. Now, look, big shot. This key's hot. What makes it hot? Whatever's in that box. What's that? How should I know? Find out. You got the key. You got the client. Now, just a minute. Somebody waves a green back at you and you think it's a rainbow. That's enough. Oh, stop it, will you? It's another bum client and you know it. Let me worry about that. If Ben held that key for seven years and won't hold it now, he's scared. What's he going to be scared of? Somebody else who wants in on the so play. So what? I'm holding the key. That makes me the clay pigeon. You're getting paid for it? Just be there tomorrow at ten. Alive. Well, I left the lion and went out to the street. Nobody was there. I hailed a cab and he let me off in front of my place. Nobody was there. I opened the front door of my apartment. Nobody was there. It began to feel like a good bet for the Lonely Hearts Club. It was a good feeling. I sat up all that night waiting. Nothing happened. I felt about as popular as a bald-headed chorus girl. Nobody made a play. It was five minutes to ten when I pulled into the parking lot next to the American Security Bank. The car next to me was a black coupe with white sidewalls. It could have been the same one that tailed us the night before. But then I figured there's a lot of cars in L.A. like that. But I leaned in and I looked at the registration. This one belonged to a guy named Al Spandy, who lived in Van Nuys. I wrote the address down and walked into the bank. The guard in a blue uniform waved me downstairs to the safety deposit boxes. It was ten, and still nothing happened. I began to feel kind of relieved, like a flagpole sitter when the wind died down. Big Ben hadn't showed yet. The only one there was a blonde sitting in a glass cage in front of the vaults. She looked at me, and I began to wonder what she did on her days off. Good morning. May I help you? Yeah, I want to see if the rent on my box has been paid. Here's the key. Mm -hmm. 60B. Just a minute. I'll take a look. 60B. 60B is all paid for. Well, I guess my partner must have taken care of it. This isn't a joint box. You're the only one who can get into it, Mr. Bender. Would you like to go in now? No, I'm waiting for somebody. 
We're all waiting for somebody. I'm waiting for a man. So am I. Been waiting long? Years. Here? Yes. Better places to wait. The ones with money keep coming here. My name's Claire. I'll remember that. Will you remember this? Granite 3408. I'll try it on my phone. When? As soon as I get a spare nickel. I'll give you one. Well, you'll run out of them that way. Uh-uh. That's why I work in a bank. Kind of hard on the depositors. Your, uh, friend's late, isn't he? I can wait. Maybe he forgot. You should have tied a string around his finger. No, lady. He already had one around his neck. Well, she went back to copping nickels, and I sat down in one of the plush chairs and waited. 10.30 came, 11 came, Benda didn't. I began to get an uneasy feeling, like a bubble dancer with a slow leak. At 11.10, I couldn't take any more waiting, so I left to head for Benda's place. Outside the bank, a thin guy with a sharp head was hawking papers. I slipped him the nickel that the blonde had given me, and he handed me a daily news. I wanted to see what a horse named Larry R. had done at Belmont, but I didn't get beyond the first page. Bendis' picture was there, right next to Governor Dewey's, only Ben wasn't running for office. They found him in his room, full of bullet holes. I guess he finally got a cure for that cough. I took my car out of the lot and headed for home. I mixed myself a tall one, and I was just getting to the bottom of it when a couple of guys kicked my door open. Regan? Yeah. I'm Lieutenant Anderson, homicide. This is Sergeant Pennelly. Hi. Don't you guys believe in knocking? My knuckles are sore. Mmm, nice stuff. Well, help yourself. It's out in the kitchen. Don't drink on a job. Pennelly? Me neither. You boys should have told me you were coming. I'd have called some girls. Not on a job. Benelli? I got a wife. All right, Regan, find your hat. What for? Well, you want to look nice. We're going downtown, you and me and Pete. Right, Pete? Right, Andy. No, it's too hot there. We thought of that. We'll give you a nice, cool place, won't we, Pete? Sure will, Andy. You got a warrant? Uh, no, we just figured you might want to tell us why you did it. Did what? Tell him, Pete. Knock off Ben Bender. And burn his feet. You're out of your mind. Now, Regan, we know you saw Bender last night. We know you got out of a car on the corner and walked up to his place. We know you were the last one to see him while he was still alive. You got a witness? Pretty one. A girl told us. Oh, you're trying real hard, Anderson, but you haven't got anything. If you were the last one to see him alive, you're the first one to see him dead. That's how we figured. Did you figure on a guy named Al Spandy who drives a black coupe? I never heard of him. And how about a dozen other hoods who knew Bender? Now you're trying hard, Regan. You haven't even got a foundation. We got the whole building. It'll never stand up. We'll see. All right, you tell me why I did it. You private eyes get folders on bank jobs. I get them from Charles Atlas, too. Bender was in on an $80,000 heist eight years ago. He went up for carrying a concealed weapon, but the money was never found. You know that the Imperial Bonding Company's offering $5,000 for the recovery of that doll. The lion. Uh, don't make any dates tonight. You're not going to be available. All right. The lion will tell you I was working on a case when I saw Bender. Oh, we already talked to the lion. Well, what did he say? He says he hasn't seen you for five days. You are listening to the story of the man with the key, tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, investigator. <laughs> Commissions are still available in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve. If you were a graduate registered nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, you may be eligible for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps section of the regular officer's reserve. These commissions are still available, and those who meet the high standards and qualify may elect active or inactive status. Those who request inactive status will continue with their civilian nursing duties but stand ready to serve in time of emergency. Nurses who elect active duty become commissioned officers in the regular Army. If you believe you qualify for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve, apply to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. And now back to the story of the man with the key and Jeff Regan, investigator. Well, I had about as much chance as a violin player with no chin. 
Anderson and Pinelli took me down and locked me in one of the rooms upstairs. They didn't ask any questions. I guess they figured they had enough answers. Oh, it was a real nice fix. A dame named Dora King takes me to a con named Ben Bender. He slips me a hot key and says, meet him in a bank at ten. I'm there on time, getting the phone number of a blonde named Claire, only Ben doesn't show. Somebody burns his feet and fogs him before he can keep the date. And then there's that black coupe registered to a question mark named Al Spandy. And then the lion deals one from the bottom. Oh, it was a screwy picture, and I was right in the middle of a frame. Well, I spent the next four hours taking in some free entertainment from the drunk in the next cell. Okay, Regan, on your feet. Bastille Day? You sprung. Well, I was getting tired of the floor show anyway. Try and make it Saturday sometimes. That's our big night. Or if I bring a date? I got a phone. I got a phone. My wife. That guy ought to be at Ciro's. Where do you think we picked him up? Regan, I'm running out of patience with you. How many times have I told you to keep out of trouble? Why didn't you tell him I was working on a case? I went to a lot of trouble to get you out. And you went to a lot of trouble to get me in. <laughs> that was easy. Still got that key to Bender's safety deposit box? I got it. Tomorrow morning at 10, you're at that bank getting into the box. You're crazy. It's in Bender's name. I'll teach you how to spell it. I won't do it. Homicide might like to know you got that key. Now, you listen to me and we'll both make dough. Where I'd be, I couldn't spend it. If the 80000 bucks from the bank job Bender pulled happens to be in that box, like I think it is, Imperial Bonding owes us five grand reward. I don't like it. You owe it to the company. Now, listen, you. Bender was knocked off for this key. Whoever wants it might make another try. Nobody knows you got it. Well, I'll give it to you, and nobody will know you got it. Regan, I'm giving you a chance to straighten yourself out. That's right. What do you mean? I feel stiff already. <laughs> Well, it was a triple play. Homicide to the lion to the black coop. I went home to wash off some of the jailhouse Lysol. When I walked in the front door, I had company. A gray flannel suit with a yellow tie was sitting on the edge of my bed. Both hands were full. The whiskey was mine. The gun was his. When he saw me, he set down the bottle and walked over and put the gun right against my neck. It felt cold and I got kind of nervous, like a hula dancer in a forest fire. Hiya, Regan. Been waiting for you. You like my liquor? I'm a rye drinker myself. Well, bring your own next time. That ain't being sociable. You weren't invited. Huh. How could I have been? You don't even know me. You're Al Spandy. You drive a black coupe. what I have for breakfast? Egg, and it's all over your tie. You look hot, Regan. You have to hold that gun there? Right there. Same one you used on Bender? The same. All right, now, give me, Regan. I told you, I don't have any rye. Where's the key? I don't use one. My door's always open. I'm, I'm talking about that key you got from Bender. I don't have it. Do you hear any music? Yeah, but I'll sit the next one out. No, you won't. This is a men's cheat. I'll step on your toes. I don't mind. It's a pull gun. I want to do it with you. Oh! <laughs> It was a long dance, but Spandy didn't get tired. I knew I wasn't going to last the evening out. And then I saw Dora King standing in the doorway back to Spandy. She was taking everything in like a Hoover vacuum cleaner on a dirty rug. She had a twenty-five in her hand, and she knew how to use it. Thanks for cutting in, lady. I, I had to do it. He, he was killing you. Yeah, I'll take the gun, huh? You know I'd have to do it. Yeah. Here. Go oh, on, drink God. it. Oh, yes. Now, you want to tell me all about it? Yes. I wanted to tell you at first, but Ben wouldn't let me. He's not around to stop you. Do you think Spandy hurt him much before he killed him? I wasn't there. He was sick. He couldn't have taken much. Why'd you tip the cops on me? I thought you might have done it. Now I know different. Tell that to Homicide. I will. You better. Spandy can't. He's dead? That's right. You still don't trust me. No, I don't. 
I couldn't help myself once the gun went off. Big Ben was my father. Yeah? He didn't want anyone to know. All he wanted was to give me a break. Why'd he hire me? He was afraid. Yeah, that's what he said. Regan? Yeah? May I have the key? I haven't got it. You can get it. Maybe. You know what's in that box? I think so. Or why don't I turn it over to the police? That's my job. Like I told you. I'm Big Ben's daughter. Yeah, lady. You convinced Spandy. Well, I called homicide and Anderson and Pinelli handled it. We all wound up downtown. It didn't take them long to find out that the gun Spandy used on me was the same one that killed Big Ben. Dora gave Anderson her story. He said it would take some fixing, but he could keep her out of the papers. It was justifiable homicide. She wouldn't even be indicted, but they had to hold her overnight. Well, it was almost daylight when I pulled to a stop in front of my apartment. I was beginning to feel a little better, but it didn't last long. When I walked into my place, it looked like the L.A. Dons had been having a scrimmage. Every corner had been gone over. Oh, it didn't make sense. Bender was dead. Spandy was dead. Dora King was downtown. But somebody still wanted that key. Well, I crawled into what was left of my bed and set the alarm for 9.30. I didn't sleep much. I kept seeing keys and faces and $80,000 bills. Ten o'clock the next morning, Granite 3408 was still sitting behind the same desk near the same safety deposit vault. She gave me the same look. I waited for you to call last night. I spent the nickel. On a doctor? I'd like to get into my box. All right, Mr. Bender, sign here. All right. There you are. This way. Looks like part of the new freeway. One thing about a vault, it's quiet. So is a tomb. We're alone. Yeah. Well? All right, sunshine, open your eyes. My box number is 60B. That can wait, I can't. Easy, baby, you'll set off the alarm. You and I can make a great team, Bender. Now, you know my name's not Bender. What is it? Regan. You and I can make a great team, Regan. Is that what you told Al Spandy? Why well, bring up a dead issue? What's your deal? You got Bender's key, I got the bank's key. You need both of them to open up the box. It's good so far, go on. Oh, there's $80,000 there. Let's not let it go to waste. Big Ben waited seven years to open that box. Look what happened to him. I waited just as long as Ben. And seven years is harder on a girl. How'd you work it? Ben and I had a great plan. I was the cashier Ben heisted. Only I just gave him a bag full of paper. The real dough's in his box. Well, that's the safest way. Keep your money in a bank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when it cooled off, both of you go in and pick up the dough together. That's the way it was supposed to work, only Ben was dumb enough to get himself picked up and tucked away for seven years. Oh, you made real good partners. Nobody trusted anybody. I trust you. That why you went through my place looking for the key last night? Mm, girls got to use their head. Besides, you might have been home. Ben and Spandy are dead. And we don't have to worry about either of them. The money's still here. And we got the keys that'll open the box. Can you add that? Yeah. What's the answer? About 20 years. What do you mean? That bonding company will see that you get the full load for grand larceny. You wouldn't turn me in. Don't make book on that. You and I make a great team, Regan. We can't lose. That's what USC thought. <laughs> Well, I called Anderson and Pinelli, and they came out and picked her up. I rode down as far as the office with them. That wrapped it up. When I told the lion what had happened, he was as happy as a college boy in a harem. He got on the phone right away and called up Imperial Bonding, told him to make out that reward check for five Gs to Anthony J. Lyon. But he was real good about it. He took me for a ride in his new Nash convertible. Well... I guess he deserved it. He was really the patsy that had done all the heavy work ever since he bailed me out of jail. Because that's when I slipped Bender's key in his pocket. Jack Webb is featured as Jeff Regan with Herb Butterfield as Anthony J. Lyon. 
Jeff Regan, investigator, written by E. Jack Newman and Larry Roman, produced by Sterling Tracy, is heard each week at this time over CBS. Tonight's cast included Ken Christie, Yvonne Patey, Marvin Miller, Paul Fries, and June Martell. If you are a graduate registered nurse, please listen carefully to this important message. 29,000 nurses are needed to join the new Army Nurse Corps Officers Reserve. All nurses who receive reserve commissions will benefit from the opportunity for specialized training offered to them by the Army. Inactive reserve status will not interfere with the nurse's civilian life, but the educational opportunities offered her by the Army Medical Department will be of great advantage. For further information, drop a card to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. Original music for this program is by Dick Aron. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. You know, this, uh, to me, in terms of uh, the interaction and the writing, this had to be the best episode of Jeff Regan we've heard yet. Uh, I was uh, chuckling several times as they worked through the dialogue. I thought that scene in the bar was uh, classic uh, with the bartender uh, inviting them to stay for the floor show because his brother was going to play something he'd written and then ended up advising them to that leaving was a good idea because it wasn't any good. Uh, and the, the similes rolled quite a bit. Uh, you usually don't hear uh, as many, uh, but this had about as many uh, or close to it uh, as an episode of Pat Novak. And long-time listeners will remember how much action uh, gets packed into that. We also saw a return of Pilgrim. So that this was a script, I, I think, that had it all. So it was top-notch uh, on this particular episode. All right, well, we do have some comments uh, on Facebook. Barbara writes, I was wondering why you don't do Richard Diamond. I love Dick Powell in that role. He is really funny. Uh, well, it's on our list of shows to do, but it, will require, it requires a lot of spice because there's uh, nearly two years' worth of shows. And we like to work through um, all the episodes of a particular show. You will, uh, sooner than we get to Richard Diamond, you'll get to hear Dick Powell in another role as Richard Rogue. Uh, which leads into a couple comments, some folks not quite as enthused with uh, Jeff uh, Regan. Um, writes Kathleen Mann uh, regarding the story of Abel and Cain and the Santa Maria. Man, the violence in that episode made me sick, and I couldn't even see it. The imagination is definitely stronger than the eye. Keep up the good work. Jeff Regan is my least favorite, but I'll listen to those episodes because that's what the day has. Um, and uh, then I have a, a, a comment here from August. I don't know why, but I just haven't gotten into Jeff Regan much. Pat Novak was my favorite series so far with its clone Johnny Madero right behind. All three starred uh, Jack Webb, of course, so it's not the actor. Part of it with uh, Jeff Regan might be the sound quality, which is sometimes hard to hear over the engine of the van I drive for work. Nevertheless, I quite enjoy the other four series currently running, so that's 80%. Pretty good. I really appreciate this podcast. Thank Thanks, Adam. Well, thanks, August and Kathleen. That's definitely kind of the variety we aim for. It would be something for everybody, because I know we've gotten some comments where Regan has been listed as a favorite. This episode, I thought, was one of, was one of the better ones. In terms of audio quality, as well as in terms of uh, violence, you may enjoy the second Jeff Regan series more. And I'll, I'll talk about it uh, when we get to it, but the second Jeff Regan series uh, stars uh, a little-known actor whose characterization reminds me a lot of uh, of Richard Rogue, though with some Marlowe-esque uh, twist. And so the the violence is a little bit less. In ten of those thirteen episodes, the audio has excellent condition. So you may enjoy the second Jeff Regan series more than the first. That one's going to be coming in ten weeks. 
And uh, speaking of series that I would like to do, I added another to the list. So from undecided to yes, I definitely would like to do A Life in Your Hands. I mentioned the show last week from the creator of Perry Mason. Uh, it's actually a pretty intriguing show. The idea uh, of a lawyer who doesn't represent either side. They're well written, uh, some pretty clever mysteries, and just good quality uh, drama. Some of the uh, 1950s uh, shows, uh, when they did drama, almost could get into silly levels of melodrama. But I don't think A Life in Your Hands did that. And uh, really, is just a solid premise. So I will enjoy bringing that to you. Those of you who have the app uh, will see this as an extra. Uh, so you can go in and listen to it. Uh, listen to a sample episode. The same thing if you're on our extra site. Uh, you can download as one of our May... Uh, unhosted episode downloads, you can download A Life in Your Hands. And just download that by July 1st. Alright, well that'll wrap it up for today. Got any comments, email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net. And uh, become a fan of the show on Facebook, facebook.greatdetectives.net. Uh, but from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.